Water power swallowing, water bottle don't bother with it. Politicians, politics flowing like it's bottomless. Started it and finished it, water needed to swim in it. More valuable than oil, be careful homie, you spilling it. Welcome, welcome, beloved community. We are back again with yet another installment of the Water Wednesdays webcast by the People's Water Board Coalition. I'm here always with my beloved co-host, Valerie Jean. Hi, Val. How's your day going? You can't forget our tech good, person good. behind the scenes, Miss Angelica. And today, viewers, we have the sheer pleasure, as always, when having these guests on, to have our esteemed Senator Stephanie Chang on, as well as the director of the <laughs> People's Water Board Coalition, Ms. Sylvia Ordunio. And they are both here today to update us on what's going on with the Water Affordability Plan bill packet, how you can get involved, and what you can do to stay informed of what's going on. So it's a short show and we'll jump right into it. So the first question I have is for you, Senator Chang. And I wanted to know if you could give the viewers just a brief summary on the Michigan Water Affordability Plan bills package. Sure. Um, well, thanks for having us on. It's great to be here. Um, happy Water Wednesday. Yes. So first of all, I just really want to say that, you know, this has been many years in the making. There's been a lot of advocates obviously pushing around this critical issue of water affordability for years and years and years. Um, so very excited. Um, this year, we worked with a number of stakeholders, both advocates from the water and environmental side of things, as well as water providers and municipalities and the State Department of Health and Human Services um, to actually meet over the course of seven months um, to, try, to try to come up with a solution that's comprehensive and effective. What are the things that we can do to really help address water affordability now in this moment that we have? Um, so very, very excited um, that just this past week, we did introduce legislation to uh, ensure that everyone in the state of Michigan has access to clean and affordable water. Um, and I'm really excited too, because this is the first time where I think we've got this real opportunity to move legislation that will make sure that people have water bills that are based on their household income. Um, so the bill package does a few things. Um, one, there is a, a bill that's around creating an affordability plan that would make sure, again, that water bills for low-income households do not go over 3% of that person's household income and with a couple different tiers based on you know, what is your household income and where does that fall in relation to the federal poverty guidelines? And then, so this would be, this would happen both at the state level with the Department of Health and Human Services, or uh, if a provider like Detroit or Oakland County or someone else decides that they want to either keep what they have or create their own program locally, they can also do that as long as it meets certain guidelines. And then it, this program also does include uh, support around plumbing repairs, because we know that that is a big issue, making sure that people can get their plumbing fixed uh, to keep their water bills affordable. And then also forgiveness for past due water bills. Uh, so we're really excited about that. Um, this is the first year where we've also included a bill that it's around a funding mechanism, um, because we know that we've got to make sure that we have funding um, to make this affordability program really, really successful and to help ensure that we have stability across our water providers. So it creates a wa low income water affordability fund that would include a $2 per meter funding factor on every water bill. And then this is actually really similar to what we already have in the energy space um, with the Michigan Energy Assistance Program, um, which was a bipartisan program that was adopted about a decade ago. Um, so that funding would help to make sure that we can actually keep and maintain this water affordability program. Um, and then we also do have a shutoff protection bill, which is really focused on protecting Michiganders who have health conditions that require access to water, um, which is really, really important that we do that. And then we also make sure that any water provider 
who is contacting residents about potential shutoff has to contact them at least four times uh, through a mailing or a, door, or a door knock or a phone call or a text message. We're really making sure that we're providing as much information as we can that's clear and understandable about how to get into a water affordability program um, so we can protect people from shutoffs. And then um, really, really excited about this. Um, due to the, le the leadership of Sylvia Orduño, we've got some great language in here around a triage process to ensure that um, if someone is really, really struggling, that we set up a process where they're actually meeting um, with a third party organization to actually figure out what is going on with that person, how can we get them help, and how can we get them back into the affordability program. And then the, the couple last bills that are also really important is around allowing a tenant to be able to request their water bill be in their own name instead of the landlord's name. That's really critical. And then also decriminalizing water reconnections after shutoff um, due to financial hardship so that it's no longer a felony, but instead would be a civil infraction. So lots of great stuff. So excited about these bills. It was a giant team effort, including many, many people over literally 24 meetings um, to come up with this plan. And we're really excited about it because it does have a lot of support, um, both from water advocates, environmental advocates, as well as water providers and cities themselves. Um, so we're very excited about the momentum. Well, thank you so much, that. Senator that Chang. This is all very, so very exciting. Sad. It's so exciting. I mean, we've been, this is something we've been working on for so long and to see it um, at the table and, you know, people um, making it happen. It's, uh, and everybody working together, which isn't, you know, um, isn't always easy to do to get everybody on a phone call and work together and make these things happen. So absolutely wonderful and exciting. Um, it's a very exciting moment. I'm loving it. Mm -hmm. um, Sylvia, I wanted to ask you, you know, well, you had so much, you spent so much time on this, but I really wanted to ask you why this was so important. Why was it important for the People's Water Board to get involved and why is it important to Michiganders? Thanks so much, Valerie Jean. And again, just big kudos to Senator Chang for all of her leadership on this, because it's really ultimately what's kept this work alive and helped us be able to get it moving forward. So as the Senator described, we had been working on this for many years and uh, even despite not having opportunities to really have it move because we had a different legislature, different governor, and they were not so much interested in these issues or even really believing that they were problems across the state. The pandemic really showed a different side of what the issues are to communities that had not been experiencing them or at least didn't understand how they were being experienced by residents. Mm -hmm. And so the work really has been driven by the information and experiences of impacted residents like both of you, you know, you and Nicole, who have really been telling us the stories and the hardships and what really we need in terms of having fair policies that meet the needs of residents on where they are, right? And, and oftentimes that means households that are having trouble paying their water bills. And again, it's not about anyone wanting free water. You all have been telling us that clearly for years. This is about people paying for water that they can afford to pay. And it changes all the time, right? The utilities have a number of costs that we understand have to be paid for, but it doesn't mean that um, all customers can afford to pay what they want to have paid for without any way to sort of control that cost and, and make it so that some households will be disconnected if they can't afford to pay. So we wanted to find a way to put a stop to the shutoffs because they're unjust in many ways, but they're also not safe. And we've heard many stories of, of households that have lived without adequate water and sanitation for too many years. And in the state of Michigan, with all our abundance of water, we, we all felt like we, we can do better. We have to do better, right? But um, the, the history of this work has been difficult, as, as you all well know, and, and it wasn't easy to even be able to get to this point. It was really only after the senator had said, look, I want to start pulling together some of the different groups of people that I've been talking to and have you all talk in one room, right? And those were those stakeholder meetings that she had engaged and pulled us together on to say, look, I've been hearing a number of different things, but I want to hear you all tell me collectively, how can we make this work? And so we spent 
many months going line by line in each of those different bills and people from the water um, advocates like us, the environmental groups, the water utilities said, look, we like this part, we have trouble with this other part, what if we change the language to say something different instead? And that's really how this process worked. We found places for consensus and where we had disagreement, we kind of put it to the side and said, okay, well, let's come back to that. And, and we had some side meetings and, and we really came to, I think, a better understanding with all of us about what it really means to be able to have water utilities that do their job, right? Provide for safe, clean, affordable water, but do it in a way so that they better understand their customer base, especially their residential customers. And, and they've acknowledged, and I think that that's something that has changed along the way. They've acknowledged what they don't know. They've acknowledged what they've um, come to understand better and how they can still do better. And that to have customers be able to pay based on what they can afford is a good business decision. That's the other part of it, right? Is it costs money to shut off people. It costs money to keep people disconnected. It costs in terms of health and the other ways that uh, communities will pay, right? If, if a household doesn't have water, they're going to have to find means to take care of themselves in other ways. They're still going to have a, a societal cost. So I think people came to understand the better way that we can approach this work so that it benefits everyone. And that's really what is the most beautiful part of this, is everyone found a way that this can benefit all of us. Mm -hmm. I completely concur with so everything wonderful. you just said, Sylvia. It makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense to have a, a very conducive packet of bills that can help all people. Um, with that being said, I'd like to pose to you and Senator Chang, what can people do to get involved and make sure that this happens? Like, what can we do to help push this through? Yeah, no, it's great. We definitely are so excited the bills have been introduced, but now comes uh, the other hard part, which is getting these, uh, you know, moving and across the finish line in the legislature. Um, so, you know, I definitely encourage folks who are tuning in today to reach out to their own lawmaker, um, whether it's calling them or sending an email or going to one of their upcoming coffee hour events in their district and just saying, hey, you know, I listened to this Water Wednesday uh, <clears throat> podcast and I really want you to support this water affordability bills. Are you aware of them? Will you support them? Um, and really try to educate, right? Because there are some lawmakers who are very aware of this issue, but there are others who may be less familiar. Um, so really, you know, educating your own lawmaker, making sure that they are aware that these bills are introduced, they're something that are supported and really letting them know this is something that both providers and advocates have come together to support um, and really delivering that message of like, this is something that is a real solution that we can do right now, um, I think would be really, really helpful. So we're hopeful that we can start moving on these bills uh, in the next few weeks, but definitely, you know, having folks reach out to their lawmakers is absolutely critical. Wonderful. Yes, and that's really what it comes down to, right? So you, would, um, you know, what were your thoughts on that? I'm, I'm thinking, you know, Valerie Jean and Nicole, we've been doing this for years, right? We've yeah. gone down to city council, we've done our testimonials, we write our letters, we make our phone calls, and, and we've been hoping to make change there. And we've struggled a lot at the local level, right? And so part of the reason why we had to try to figure out how to get this addressed at the state level is because many people outside of Detroit were telling us, look, we're having affordability problems too. Like I know a lot of people talk about this as being a Detroit problem, but it's so much bigger than that, right? The lessons of emergency management and all of the communities that have had trouble being able to um, struggle with the bankruptcy problems and how that also impacted people's water bills and yeah. the issues with water utilities. And so, so many folks have been telling us, look, we have water portability problems too, but we feel like we can't talk about them. And so this is now the time for people to really start talking about them because the affordability um, yeah. provisions in this package help everyone. Yeah. And so a lot of people that felt like they've had to sort of stay under the radar or they didn't want to have to speak out and tell their story, this is really when the electeds need to start hearing the stories from residents in different communities. And so we're hoping that this um, broadcast here, as well as the other things that we're doing to communicate to folks across the state, will encourage people to reach out to their lawmakers and say, look, I've heard about these bills. I think they would really help me and they would help my family and my neighbors. And I really hope that you'll support them. And it's those kinds of 
outreach efforts and stories that we need residents to feel comfortable talking to their lawmakers about because we don't want it to, that anyone is feeling doubtful that this will be helpful. We know that it will be. It's been, a, again, a long fight that we've all worked on. But it, a lot of times people, again, don't want to have to talk about how difficult it is to pay their bills. But I think lawmakers these days are really wanting to hear more from their constituents about what they need their lawmakers to do to make lives better for them. And this, is, this package of bills is a significant way towards that. And then just lastly, I think one of the other things that I really appreciate about Absolutely. this is for people that have had the experience of trying to apply for different kinds of public assistance programs through MA, uh, Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, right now water is the only like a uh, utility that you can't get help for unless you're already wow. in shutoff mode, right? You've gotten the disconnect notice and now you've got to hope that you can get some kind of resources to come in before the disconnection happens, right? This will now make it so that there is a safety net for residents. You don't have to wait for that shutoff notice. You can get ahead of it and say, look, I have trouble paying my bill. I need to get into a program that makes it affordable for me so I can be sustainable for years, right? And help people be able to manage that part of their household bills and income so that it's not non-issue anymore, right? You can manage your life, you can be successful and work in school and all those other things you need to do and not have the water bill, one of those things that makes your family stressed and, and worried. You know, another thing, thank you so much for that, because that's really a distress of getting a water shut off. I can tell you personally, you just don't get over anytime soon, even once the water's back on. Um, the mental stress and the physical stress of it all is very, very, very hard. If folks want to um, have, you know, organize community meetings or want to invite us to their block clubs and things like that, I know that the people, the folks from the People's Water Board would come and help you educate your neighbors and your family and, um, you know, anybody who's feeling passionate about it, reach out to us. We will come. We'll talk about the bills um, with you. You can share this Water Wednesday with folks. You can, I know that you can reach out. You can send Senator Chang an email if you're concerned about, um, it, you know, anything in them or if you want to know more about things. So reach out to us. We are here to help with that education and to do everything that we can to get these water bills passed because they're going to save lives. I mean, that's just what it looks like, you know, um, uh, with mass, after been, been through mass water shot offs, I can tell you <laughs> that it's going to um, in, enhance people's lives and make their lives better. I just know it. Is there any final thoughts that either one of you would like to say um, before we wrap up? Anything else that folks need to know? Um, well, I'll just add that, you know, I think that, you know, you've got a poster right behind you that says that uh, water, sewer, and stormwater affordability is good for families in our communities and that we need it for all counties and all residents. I'll just really emphasize that, um, you know, and sort of going back to what Sylvia said is that, you know, we can do the community by community or we can do the statewide, which is what we really actually need to do because we know that there are families everywhere in the state of Michigan that are affected by this issue of water affordability. People's rates have continued to go up. Uh, we've got so many infrastructure needs. And so we've got to make sure that we are doing this in a statewide way um, and helping every single Michigander. So um, whether you live in Detroit or Macomb County or Oakland County or Wayne or anywhere else in the state, uh, it's really important that we're all engaged in this effort because it's going to be uh, really, really important that we get this done for the entire state of Michigan. We are the state that is surrounded by fresh water, and we've got to make sure that everyone has access to affordable water. That's great. Any final thoughts, Sylvia? I'm thinking that we really need to make this a statewide conversation, and I'm hoping that that's really what it becomes. And, and so part of, um, I think, what is different here, again, we've talked about the pandemic and the experiences of residents um, as customers of utilities and how the, the utilities have moved, right? They're, they're willing to be open to listening now and it's we're not experiencing the blaming and shaming that we had before, but there's still a lot of conversation that needs to be had about what water means to our communities, what water is vital for in terms of our household needs, right? For being able to just participate in all aspects of life. But there are big conversations that are going on around infrastructure and how do we pay for that and how do we get out the lead service lines and deal with PFAS and all kinds of other contaminants in our systems. And so being able to 
take on water affordability makes it so that we've at least managed that part of some really challenging aspects of water security in the state of Michigan. And at least we know that our most That's vulnerable great. residents will no longer be in a position of having to figure out, do they pay the water bill or do they pay the medicine bill or the water bill or the house note or whatever it is, right? Awful choices that no one should have to be making. And so now we can actually be able to focus more on the water quality issues, the health issues related to other aspects of water and what it means for us to also be able to um, talk with other people that, that are saying, look, I, I wanna know more about where my water comes from. I'm concerned about my water quality, but they, they can't get in those kinds of conversations when people are worried about just having water to begin with. And so this also allows us to have some bigger and better conversations about the state of water quality and security in Michigan that we haven't really been having, but there's such important questions. And I think people are more open to having those conversations. We just need to allow everyday folks to have their foot in the door to be able to give their, their two thoughts about, you know, what they feel that this will do to improve their lives and what else, what else they want to see from the state of Michigan around water. Thank you so much, Sylvia. And thank you uh, so much, Senator Chang. This was such an important conversation to have. Um, I'm looking forward to sharing it with our community so that folks can share it with theirs. Um, I'd like to thank our viewers. Uh, we're three years in. I'd really like to thank our viewers who, um, who tune, in, tune in every week um, and support us every week. I also would like to thank uh, Will C., our new intro and outro song, Water Power, that's by Will C. He uh, gave it to the People's Water Board to be able to use. And so the Water Wednesday team is extremely thrilled and happy that he allowed us to use that song um, and, you know, give him a shout out and, uh, and things if you get a chance. Um, also, to all of our viewers, try to take care of each other. Try to look out for each other and try to stay afloat. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Started it and finished it, water needed to swim in it, more valuable than oil. Be careful, homie, you spilling it.